we're seeing what the prime does at distance, 65. Let's see if we can put a couple in the heart. My early season success is greatly due to the preparation during the spring and summer months. After having such a great early season last year, I was feeling the pressure to try to repeat once again. family out uh, behind the house and we're trying to get all the rock off the plots I doze this summer so it's the beginning of August time to get some seed in the ground and uh, see what happens I got Nora out here on her first rock picking adventure we got some pretty good bucks on camera by the house so it's pretty exciting I don't have much land here but it's always a, a new thing of pride to, to have something right by your house on your own piece of ground so I'm excited to get her planted but there's a lot of stone more than I like but it's all we got so making use of it. a night or two with that, the food pot, it just doesn't matter. If I have them right here open in day, boy, you can be riding home in the back of the pickup, I can tell you that much. Well, I set this up that, uh, my back plot's kind of the kill plot, and then I did kind of a center plot here just to kind of stage before they hit the beans and the main fields out here. So this fall forage is coming in just beautifully, and I'm super excited to have a nice little honey hole right by my house. So we'll see what happens. Well, there's a bunch of good bucks on camera all nighttime, but that'll change come middle of October. So I'm excited. I put about an acre and three quarter food plot in the area where that toll pointer is. So. Should be good. I'll go watch it the next couple days and make a decision. But I know six packs living behind the house. That's I haven't had him on the food pot in a month, and every time we've seen him, he's been right around there in that marsh. So he's the one I really want to kill. But with two little girls at home, I'm not going to be too picky. <laughs> Wife will get overwhelmed quick. You want to go wing some arrows? Yeah. You ready to take a break? Yeah, I don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's opening day in Wisconsin, and uh, Dan and I are out on uh, a new piece of ground. I got him putting a pill on hold because I've been watching a big 12-pointer out here all season. And he uh, was on my food plot here three days ago at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so I figured figured we'd give him a try. The, the plot and pill is rocking, but this is the biggest buck I've had on camera all summer, so I'm going to see what I can do with them. But one problem is with the wind we have today, the two stands we have set up are wrong, so Dan and I are going to go in, hang a set, and uh, see if we can get the river's edge up in the tree quiet and then hang it and sit it right away. So I have a good idea where he's coming from, but 
There's so many deer around here, I'm not sure where we're gonna put the Ozonics to the test too tonight, so. him this whole time. I don't know if it was better or worse, but when he finally started coming, my heart was beating a mile a minute. No tracking involved. He's laying right there. I don't even remember touching the shot off. I just remember stopping and squeezing and I'm running out of arrows. I don't know what I was dropping and everything else, but that did have me shook. I'm not going to lie. I can usually hold it together pretty good, but Oh man, we have to light up the phones now. Opening day. My bad part about this is I'm done. But that's okay, that's my biggest buck today by far. Hey, here's the 12 from last night. Uh, we ran out of light, so I wanted to do a little filming in the daylight. Well, it was a great hunt last night. I wasn't really expecting to see him, but I, I figured I'd go in and give it a try. We had one picture of him on the 9th coming in during the daylight, and then no picture since. So. I checked the camera Friday afternoon and 
seen he was there, so I figured Saturday Saturday afternoon we'd give it a try. So I got in there and hung a set, and lo and behold, he comes out at, at 10 to 7, and we had a watch for about half an hour, and he finally came in and gave us a shot. But I gotta thank my wife for staying home and watching my two little girls while I'm out hunting, and thank Wally for helping me do the food plot and helping me get the spot to hunt, and thank God for just blessing me and letting me do what I love. The only bad part to this is it's day one and I'm done, so I gotta put the wife on a buck now. With my tag filled, it's time to get back to work. It was definitely a blessing taking out early. Now I'm able to spend more time with the family and hopefully help Mike and Heather get on bucks the remainder of the season. Back in business. It's uh, September 17th and Mike and I came out to shoot a doe where I killed my 12 opening weekend. It's really hot and humid out today, but Mike's leaving tomorrow to go to North Dakota, so we figured we'd come give it a try. So I'm kind of saving this for the rut and gun season for Scott and then for me, so get a door to off his food plot yet early, I'd be happy and then leave it alone until the rut.
can't believe she didn't get me. She had to be 10 yards away. I couldn't even get the camera on her. When she walked by, she came around this corner and got right here. I actually let her get out to about 30 before I could shoot her. She was going pretty heavy and I drove that deer all right up in there. Oh, that was awesome. Here's my uh, Wisconsin doe from last night. Dogs came through. They kicked her out of her bed. Hey, go lay down. Come here, sit. Sit. Take number two. We ended up finding her about two and a half hours from when we talked last on the camera. My buddy Scott came along and I think what happened is those dogs came through and kicked her up out of her bed. I gotta give the T3 credit because she, she never stopped bleeding and it was always a good blood trail, but we must have tracked her at least 300 acres. She's a, a beautiful doe, probably a two-year-old doe, so she'll be perfect to eat. And I, my family and I eat a lot of venison, so I'm gonna get her cut up and shoot one or two more a year yet for this freezer, and we'll be good for the winter. It is a special feeling to mount such a magnificent deer that has consumed my thoughts for most of the summer. While I'm working on the Big 12, I can't help but relive the moments of opening day. He's either the best two-year-old I've ever seen or he's just a good three. He'll be a stud eight again next year too, so I mean there's some good deer that made it through. October and uh, Nora and I came out today to put the Barnett up on the, the mound that I dozed this summer. Uh, I put in two food plots right here behind my house so I got this mound up maybe four feet off what would be ground level so it'll give you a little extra height for the ground blind and I basically designed it for a ground blind or a permanent stand so we're gonna throw her up and hopefully Heather will get a shot at a buck here come November. Usually this area gets good come rut time, so I'm kind of hoping that stays true. They haven't really ate the food plot yet, so. Nora and I are gonna throw the tent up and, and see what happens. Hopefully kill a buck out of it in a couple weeks. All right. Yeah. You got another rock, baby? Good job. Should we put it right there like that? Should we go put a few more little stakes in, baby? Yeah. This would be a fun sit if you get some deer out into the plot actually feeding on it. Baba. Hey, we got Whisper, remember? Baba. We're back in the woods, we go, shh, shh. Yeah, we got Whisper. Hey, Baba. What's 
the button on the camera. Good job, man. We got 20 pictures. Alright, let's get out of here. We got 20 pictures. We'll get 20 more tonight. For me, hunting isn't just a pastime, it's a family affair. I have been fortunate enough to build a lifestyle in the outdoors and have a job where I can bring these beautiful animals back to life.